Hi there, it's Dr. Mary Barbera. And today we are talking all about books and how we can use books to increase language in kids with autism and toddlers showing signs. I have Kelsey General with me. We're going through some of the top questions we get all about books. So let's get to it. All right, Kelsey, we are here. Thank you for joining us and for preparing the questions, the top questions we get about books. Um, so let's just start out with the uh, question one. What are yeah. We question one is my child will not sit and read books. What should I do? I'm feeling like a pretty bad parent. <laughs> yeah. I just, just the other day I was walking with a friend, um, that I don't know that well. And she was asking me about a little boy that she knows with autism. And, um, she was saying that, you know, it just seems weird because, you know, the, the parents don't read to him. And like, I know we always read to our three kids, she was saying, and like, it just seems weird. Like maybe, you know, maybe it's because they're not reading to them that there's more of a language issue. And I was just quick to defend this parent that I don't even know because reading books to kids with language delays and especially with autism is very tricky. And books are such a great tool to get more language, but this is very common. My son, Lucas, did not want to read books, would not sit for books, would, you know, rush, want to rush through the books, want to read the same books over and over, um, chewed on books, ripped pages out of books, you name it. It was punishing experience for all of us. And so we really didn't read books <laughs> um, like a normal, quote unquote, normal family would. So <clears throat> the first thing to know is you're not a bad parent if you can't get your child to read a book. And we're going to hopefully in the next, uh, you know, 15, 20 minutes, give you some tips that you can start to use books. But the whole key to books or with anything, toys, materials, foods, anything, is you have to pair the books with reinforcement. Um, a book isn't naturally reinforcing, especially to kids with language delays that don't understand the words. If you if you um, think about language, like say you were in a foreign country and you didn't understand books, you didn't understand the language. Reading books, even with one sentence per page, um, would be really frustrating and boring you would be like, what is happening? I don't understand all the language. So we need to pair easy books, little language, lots of pictures, and we need to go fast and, and have maybe a, another reinforcer, external reinforcers. Um, maybe we read books and we give food to the child or a special drink or um you know, we we use books that have flaps or or sounds or or some kind of textures that can really um, improve the experience and be more reinforcing to the child. So that's that's the first thing is you're not a bad parent. It's about pairing and it's about choosing books, especially in the beginning, that are really fun and motivating. Yeah, I would agree. And we're going to get into books to start with, but it's like super fun to have books that have feeling books that add sensory experiences. So it's not just words and that's, and giving your child maybe a snack too, or something they really love to hold or play with while you're looking at a new book. Okay. Those would be my top, my top, you know, things if your child will not sit and read and and at the beginning, if they want to read the same book over and over, let them for a little bit as you start to bring in new books that they um, are looking forward to looking at. And and start small. You know, it might be 30 seconds where you page through a book or super quick or you page through two books, three books, super quick. And it only takes a minute and a half. Maybe lower your expectations of a 10 minute book session. Yeah. Um, so think, think quick, think reinforcing, um, and don't put too much pressure on yourself or your child. Yeah. And you don't need to read the whole book. You know, 
you don't need to read everything. You can just flip through it quickly or look at the pictures quickly or label the picture. We don't need to be reading just because it's written in the book does not mean we need to read it word for word mm -hmm. to be reading. So that gets us to our next question, which is my child wants to read the same books over and over. What should I do? Yeah. And that's a good place to start. Um, you know, whether you have a book like Brown Bear, Brown Bear, which is very repetitive or Go Dogs Go, uh, which is a Dr. Seuss book. You know, some kids memorize the books, you know, that that page, this page, this first page has Go Dogs Go, Go on Skates or Go by Bike, you know, um, with the visuals and the repetition, a lot of kids learn to enjoy it because they know what's coming next. And it's just like watching the same video over and over again. They know that in the next scene, you know, this character is going to jump out from behind the sofa. And they know with uh, books that are repetitive and that you read often, um, they know what's coming next. So starting with books that um, I know with, with Lucas, he, we started with like a first word book and I would label the, the pictures and he wanted me to label the pictures then, um, you know, time and time again, the same way he wanted me to go in order. Um, did it become stimmy? Yes. But it was joint attention. It was um, me, him sitting there, him really manding or requesting my attention, requesting in a nonverbal way to label the things in order like I did the day before. So um, I think repetitive books, especially in the beginning, are fine. Um, we could also go on YouTube and and search for, you know, Go Dogs Go or or any of the Dr. Seuss books, uh, Green Eggs and Ham and those sorts of things and find videos of the read alouds and, and repetitive things. And is that the best leisure activity? It could be a good start, right? Um, it could be a safe um, thing for your child to do that isn't you know, we have to look for safe things that our children can do while we're busy. Um, and uh, so reading repetitive books or having a video read them repetitive books isn't a bad idea. Yeah, I agree with that. And, you know, Brentley likes to read books over and over. So you can also look up books that are similar to the ones they like to read over and over. I know in a lot of books, uh, my son likes crashing or he likes when people get stuck and so finding similar books that have a similar storyline, but might be a little bit different at your library can help. Um, so those are definitely ways you can um, get started on with the over and over or start with one they really love and then look at a new one and then do the one they really love again, just to start adding some new books. Yeah, that's what I would do. And so the next question is pretty big. It's how do we use these books to improve language? Yeah, so I have a book program bonus video within my courses that is has been very helpful. And I developed this program, you know, more than a decade ago because I was finding that kids with autism um, just really did not tolerate books very well. And for those of you in the autism, you know, field, behavior analyst, speech pathologist, uh, therapist, you know how important it is, and even parents, you know how important it is to not just do table time, but also do natural environment teaching. But natural environment teaching can be tricky because it's like you need to have novel things going on and not just play the same way. So. And I did a video, I did a podcast video on playtime, social time in that book where you gathered, we can link that in the show notes, but you gather, you know, boxes of, of kitchen items and, and then have different play schemes going on. And I find that to be really hard to train therapists to get good at that. So what I developed was basically a natural environment teaching 
uh, program uh, system, which we can use books um, to teach language comprehension. So in the book program, um, what I recommend is that you actually physically go to a library. And I know that's kind of like, you can get online books, but I do think that there is a lot of value in holding books and going through the pages um, and controlling the book flow that you can't get um, on a Kindle or something like that. But what I recommend is going to the library, getting uh, five books, whatever, you know, five, six books, going through the, you know, kindergarten books, preschool books, even if your child's older, um, if they're not tolerating books and they don't have any language or a lot of language, you're going to want to really pick books that are more for preschoolers than for you know, first or second graders. Um, words, uh, books that have, now this is, I'm holding up a little Arthur book, but what, what the biggest thing is, is that we want to pick books that have one sentence per page or just a few words per page. Or like Kelsey said, if they have, if you have a book that is good with two or three lines per page, maybe you don't read all the words, but, um, the biggest part is not to just read the words. Um, do you want to ride with me? Say the magic word is, is on this page that I'm holding up with Arthur and his sister DW. But the, the biggest part of the book program is language comprehension. So we, we see a car, we see a bunny in the car, and this can work even for kids who have no expressive language. You can say, touch the car, or look, there's a bunny. Where's the bunny? Oh, look at his ears. Can you touch your ears? Or if the character's sleeping in the bed, show me sleeping. And you can help the child show you kind of a sleeping pose, which is the sign for sleeping. So whether your child has no language or a lot of language, I find that the book program, which is, it's a, it's a little bit hard to explain here, but you basically get novel books with one sentence per page. And then you ask the child questions, receptive questions, touch the car, tacting questions. If the child can talk, who is this Arthur or DW or a balloon? Um, and you want to make sure that your questions are easy enough that they're getting 80% of the questions correct. Um, and we have a little data sheet. And, um, and then you also can find kind of missed concepts that you should be teaching your child. Like they don't know what a ladder is or they don't know what um, a balloon is. Um, and then you might think, oh, those are things that I thought they should know. And then you might want to teach them outside of the book program. But the key is, is that you get novel books. And then every week you take your child back to the library or you go yourself, you exchange these five books for another five books and that you don't, for the book program, you don't read the same book over and over again because it becomes too stimmy and not really the tool. So I find that the book program is a really great natural environment teaching program to kids with no language all the way up to talking in phrases. So, um, and then as you're going to the library, you can pick books like a snowman book when it's time, when it's winter time, or once upon a potty book. This might be a book that you buy or you buy some potty books when you're trying to potty train. These might be books that you haven't been in the bathroom or you read to your child more repetitively. Also another book, you know, preparing for a, a sibling, you could get a, a sibling type of book. Um, this, this book is the baby sister. So when you go to the library, look for books for preschoolers, but also look for books that are seasonal or appropriate or timely for whatever your child and you are going through. Yeah, those are all great tips. And one of the other, 
you know, things we talk about in the courses as part of our materials list is things like a first word book. And how we use this is it's a great thing to just look at and tap, you know, clock or fork or, you know, um, things that the child might might like um, in the book. Car, you know, tapping and touching and just looking and seeing what they're interested in. Um, those are good ways. Um, we also talk a lot about pointing in our online courses because that's a really important early skill and books can really help with pointing. You can help them show you which pictures they like. We can have books that where they, where we help them make a point and touch things. So it can help um, with not even just expressive language, but just nonverbal language of, of touching and pointing. Um, and just this sheer, like sitting and attending with you. They don't have to say a word and they don't even have to touch anything. Yeah. They sit and attend for, you know, a minute versus 15 seconds. That's a win. So, yes. and, and sometimes you just need, you know, so I, I do think that um, there's also pointing pop, pop books. What are they called? Like pop. Yeah. They're called polka dot books. Polka and dot. I believe they're by Melissa and Doug, but yeah. poke a dot. If you, if you search those and yeah, they really help. Cause you can't, if you have a child pointing with their whole hand, they can't push the the buttons unless they make an actual point. Yeah. Pointing so, with your index finger is a, a really important first skill. Should appear um, naturally by 18 months at the latest. Should be happening a lot, not just a point here or there. Um, and, you know, we work with... Uh, we have programs, online courses for parents and professionals. And in our toddler course, um, half the members don't have a child with a diagnosis of autism. So we do get a lot of those early learners who um, are having trouble pointing. And we have a point, pointing video, bonus video in our course. And part of that is helping the child learn to point, helping them touch with, a, with an index finger, and then start holding reinforcers back where you get more of a point from a distance. So pointing is great. Yes. And we kind of already jumped into the next question, but once we're starting to improve language, which book should I start with? Well, I think starting with repetitive books, uh, character books, um, you know, my son's older now, he's in his late twenties. So, you know, he loved Arthur Barney, you know, so getting characters of who they like, um, repetitive books like the Dr. Seuss book, anything. Um, so you should own these books and the first word book. And so I would start with more of the repetitive books and that sort of thing. Then when you're ready to expand, then you go more for the novel books and things that aren't going to be as interesting and reinforcing flat books. Those sorts of things are great. Um, texture books, like some, a bunny might have like big fur on it and, you know, shiny things, anything um, kind of sensory might get a child's attention. Yeah, I'd agree with everything you said. And again, what we just showed, which is the first hundred words book, um, just because it has lots of choices in it. Um, and then you can also get these hundred word books, but they are sound books. And no, we're not huge proponents of sound books, but if a child likes to hear the lights and they like to, to see that kind of stuff, this is a book type thing. There are pages, there are items they can touch. It will make noises and we can still turn the pages. Something like this is better than an electronic book that doesn't have actual pages because this is just similar to an actual book. Yeah, I like that. Um, and yeah. also, um, I'm not really sure where I got this from, but, you know, this is a brown bear, brown bear book, which is a repetitive book. It's a classic children's book, but you can print it out, laminate it, and you can also take these pictures and um, cut them up and laminate them so to help the child participate 
Um, you can make similar things for like song choice boards and old McDonald and the child can pick. You see these in preschools a lot where the child can pick an icon, you know, uh, they're going to pick a cow and then we all sing moo and um, that sort of thing. Um, if you do make books like this or you're a teacher and you have a lot of books like that, that's great. But that's a stimmy book. That's a that's a repetitive book. There's not going to be like new language and new learnings about what the child is missing um, like it is when we bring in novel books um, to the situation. Yeah, I would I would agree with all of that. And then so once um, once my child will sit for books and are engaging with some of these early books that we just mentioned, what books are next? Well, a lot of kids um, can at, are actually hyperlexic, which we've done videos and podcasts on. We can link those in the show notes and down below. Um, so eventually we're going to want the child to read to us um, if possible. And then we're going to have to ask questions um, to build in that language comprehension and reading comprehension. Um so that's where I would go next. If your child can't read, um, I would teach them to read with, uh, there's, there's various uh, ways to teach reading. We're not going to get into that. Um, also picking maybe books with two sentences per page if the child can't read and you read that or more complex pictures. Um, really, it's it's about the pictures uh, more so than what's in the text, because if I if a child's working on or knows prepositions and colors and um, you can say, oh, what's under the ladder and what's next to this or where is um, the pony and language can get very advanced from that. So I would continue with the book program, continue with going to the library, exchanging books. Um, also, here's a book I can draw people um, as kids get older, not too young though, because their fine motor and their hand coordination is not good for actual drawing till probably close to kindergarten. But, you know, for the five-year-olds, four-year-olds, uh, and above, you can, uh, becomes quite a, quite a skill and quite a leisure activities for some kids to learn to draw, to learn to do things. Um, also incorporating books into songs, um, song choice boards and that sort of thing to really, um, books should be an important part of a child's day, whether they have autism, signs of autism or typically developing. So I think once a child becomes advanced, maybe catches up with language or almost catches up, then I would really look to their preschool for what kind of themes and what kind of books are available there they might, you might want to do something similar at home to uh, really give that your child more of a one-to-one -one situation with books, which they might not be getting in, in schools. That's also an important note is a lot of times with preschools, especially as the kids get older, three, four years of age, there's book time where it's, it's a lot of reading and very little interaction with the pictures um, your child's probably not going to be able to tolerate that, uh, all that reading with one out of, you know, 15 turns to interact. So you might have to adapt circle time. Um, you might not have the child participate in book reading for circle time if it's not enough interaction, not enough reinforcement. So don't think like, you know, all is lost because your child won't sit for a 15 minute circle time. You need to find out what's happening in circle time. If there's a lot of reading, just think of that, you know, example with the foreign language. If there's a ton of reading and the child doesn't understand the language, then it's, it, you know, it doesn't matter if you give him, you know, a widget and have him sit. It's still probably a big waste of his time and, you know, could could stir on some, some major problem behavior. So we need to use books in a positive way. We need to really uh, pull up our sleeves and 
make books work. And if your child is not tolerating books, hopefully we've given you lots of examples and ways to pair up books to begin to use them more effectively. Yeah, I agree with everything you said. And I think we can probably wrap up from here. It's best to, you know, if you are looking for the next step, if your child is five, but developmentally more three, you can always look best books for three-year-olds and give you a starting place of ideas of kind of the level. And um, yeah, just make sure as you're going up, as if you notice a certain amount of words is too much, don't be afraid to go back and, and, and do books they enjoy as long as they're enjoying them. Yeah. And, and if you're stuck, our online courses and community, we have both the toddler and the school age course. I have brand new webinars um, in there that I just created. So marybarbera.com forward slash workshops, attend a workshop, see if the course and community might be right for you. We talk about books. We've got that bonus video. We have a bonus video on pointing and all kinds of things. So um, if you've listened this far, you're probably a perfect candidate to come join us and really make some huge, huge progress. So hope you found this uh, book uh, video helpful and let us know, you know, do a review. Let us know if you, if you like this format and, uh, Yeah, we'll see you here next time. Uh, Same time, same place next Tuesday. Bye.